Hello and welcome to the AI Tour series. Today we are going to talk about Environ Query System. So EQS or Environed Query System is a system that allows AI characters to receive information about their surroundings. So now let's talk about items. Whenever you use EQS, it covers a specific area with an array of key points, items. So these colorful dots that you see on the right are items. And each item has some weight. And the color depends on the weight. So EQS runs a series of tests to pick the most suitable items. Now let's talk about useful scripts. And the one that really comes in handy is EQS Tester. It visualizes EQS items in editor and when added to a game object, it makes it a querier. So the object that makes queries. Now let's talk about useful objects. And the one that's really useful is environment query. So that's a scriptable object that holds EQS settings. And you can attach it to EQS tester script as a field. Now let's talk about main sentence of the environment query or EQ. So first one is generator. It defines shape of EQS area and it also defines space between items. So basically you can vary the density of the items. Second setting is trace mode. So this one defines what to attach EQS area to. You can either choose navmesh or layer. That can help you exclude unwanted objects from EQS. So, and the third setting is tests. So this one defines an array of tests that EQS runs in order to pick most suitable items. So now let's talk about tests a little bit more. So what is a test? A test is a check that an item has to pass. And as I've already stated, EQS can run multiple tests. So now let's talk about some of the common test settings. And first one is test purpose. So it defines if a test affects item's weight or filters items or does both. And then there are score settings. They specify operations that are used to calculate item's weight. And another important setting is filter, which simply defines the range of allowed values. You can either define maximum value or minimal value or define both. Now let's talk about main tests. So the first one is distance. Distance simply checks distance from item to specified target. Second one is has path. So this one checks if there is a path between two specified points. Third test is slope. This one simply checks area slope angle. So you can use it, for example, to define the parts of terrain that your character can or cannot climb. So next one is overlap. This one checks if item is overlapped by a selected geometric shape. So the shape can be either sphere or cube. And the last one is trace. This one looks quite interesting and it checks the visibility zone. So what it does is it basically makes a ray cast from querier to items and checks if there are any intersections. And based on that, it defines whether item is visible or not. And now let's talk about useful nodes. So EQS is a part of AI tree. So in order to access all of the powers that EQS provides, you can simply use node run EQS query. So this node basically runs EQS query and you can specify which EQ object to use. You can find this node in tasks common run EQS query. 
Here you can see this node in the picture on the right. So now we've successfully covered all basic concepts of EQS and we are ready to create our example. So now let's create our example. Here you can see the scene from our previous videos. Let me quickly remind you what's happening here. So that's our character and it has behavior runner component attached to it. And this behavior runner component uses this behavior tree. Let's take a look at it. So that's our AI character logic. As you can see, our behavior tree now has two branches. First is Petrol, and second is Pursue, and it only pursues if it has target. So, while patrolling, our character detects neutral signal for one second, then it picks random position on NavMesh in the given radius using random position node, then it moves to random position, and then it waits. And if it has target, it goes to pursue branch. So if it has target, it detects alert signal for 5 seconds, and if target is still visible, it moves to it, and then it also waits. So that's our logic. And also I should mention that our behavior trees, it picks and stores values in this blackboard. So here you can see vector key position. So here we store our random position that we pick. So here we also have transform key self and transform key target. Yeah, so that's our character logic. And also our AI bot has AI perception blackboard component attached to it. And here we have key target and we have site config. So as you can see, our bot has field of view. And here is our target, this sphere, and it has AI perception source component attached to it. So it means that this sphere is visible by our bot. So once again, if you are not familiar with behavior trees, blackboards and AI perception, please check out our previous videos where I cover this topic. So everything is good so far, but our patrolling is too primitive at this point, because our bot doesn't really care if there is a wall in front of it or if it's standing in the end of map, it still can pick this position and move to it, even if it doesn't make any sense. It can create some awkward situations. So today we're going to use environment query system to improve our patrolling logic. And to do that, let's right-click and create Renowned Games AI Tree Environment Query. So that's our Environment Query object. And now I'll go to our scene and I'll create Empty Game Object and I'll also attach EQS Tester component to it and I'll drag and drop our environment query object to this script. Yeah, and I'll also position it. So zero, zero, and well, let's put it somewhere here. Yeah, so now let's configure our environment query object. First, let's set generator. We'll say grid, and here you can see our items. Then we'll set our trace mode to navmesh, and now you can see our items moved a bit because now they're attached to our navmesh. And now let's add some tests. So yeah, our first let's, I think let's increase our EQS area. Let's say, well, 15 or even 16. Let's position it a bit more to the center, right? 
let's say the space between dots is one, so you see the density increased. And now let's add some tests. So first we'll add overlap test. And we'll say that it's going to filter our dots. We'll set this one to, let's say, multiply. Here, let's say maximum. And here we are going to say shape sphere and let's say radius of 1.0. 0.72. So now you can see those blue dots were excluded by our filter. So that's how we exclude some of the dots that are positioned near the walls using our overlap test. So now our bot is not going to pick any of those blue dots. Now let's add another test. Let's say overlap. Yeah, and here we'll say, well, for example, box. I'll also set to filter. Here we'll say minimum and minimum of 0. Point, well, let's say 0. 0.5. Yeah, and uh, let's say, for example, 2 and 2. Yeah, so now you see there are a lot of blue dots, and our bot is only going to pick a dot out of our green items. So green ones were not excluded by the filter. And lastly, let's set another test, let's say trace. We'll use it for score only. We'll set score sampling operation to multiply. So now you can see red dots have lower value than lower weight than our green dots. And uh, here we'll say key and self. So now we've configured our environment query object and we have our EQS tester, but we still didn't access our EQS from our AI tree. So now let's do that. Let's open our behavior tree. And instead of just picking random position, we're going to pick a position using our environment query system. So let's delete our random position node. And instead of that, let's create node, tasks, common, run EQS query. Let's connect it and let's configure our node. So here we need to select our environment query object. So let's drag and drop this one and let's select key position. Let's go back here, right click and auto range. So now, instead of just picking a random position, we use one of the positions that our EQS gives us. And we store it in position key. Later, we move to this position and we wait. So nothing really changed instead of the way how we pick our position while patrolling. So now let's, let's say our scene and check how it works. Yes, yeah, so now, as you can see, our bot only goes to positions that are green, so only to green items. So now let's move our target a bit and let's see. Ah, yes, yeah, so now our bot detected, so we need to escape somehow. Yeah, and now well, you see, now it moved to the green items, that's why it found it again. Because basically what we do is we pick places that are currently invisible. 
So now our bot moved and now it sees it again. So it gets much harder to hide. Yes, yeah, so now it moved there, so it lost it. But you get the general idea. Now, instead of just picking random positions, our bot picks positions that are currently invisible and not located too close or too far from obstacles, which makes it find our target more effectively. So congratulations, we've just improved our pattern logic using environment query system.